Cut up, God, but you're welcome back. It's Ghana Month, and so everything we're doing on this show is all about promoting our rich heritage. And of course, we've been wearing African prints all year, but of course, it's most significant in the month of March, especially because of the Eat Ghana, Wear Ghana, See Ghana, and Feel Ghana campaign. And today we'll be speaking to the Executive Director of the National um, Commission on Culture, and she's Madame Jeannette Edna Nyame. And so she'll be telling us what really has gone into the planning for Ghana Month, how far have we gone in ensuring that we promote our cultural heritage, and of course, how do we rope in the youth? Because that is equally important. They are next generation and they will spearhead the next um, you know, cultural campaign when it comes to maybe 20, 30 years from now. And so thank you so much for joining me. And so it's good to have you on the show. Thank you. Thank Wear you. Ghana, see Ghana, feel Ghana, eat Ghana. Have we done our best in terms of promoting this ideology? Right, thank you very much for the invitation. You're welcome. And good morning to your viewers too. Um, realizing that we haven't done enough okay. to promote what we have. The Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture came with this uh, program mm -hmm. that we should try to promote the eating, the wearing, the seeing and the feeling of Ghana. Yeah. So the National Commission on Culture aspect was the wearing aspect of it. Yeah. So we took it upon ourselves to help to promote Ghana as part of our mandate spelled out in the cultural policy of Ghana. Mm. So, as, I, as you said, we haven't done enough, but we are trying to promote, to help to promote, sensitize the people to wear what we have. Your focus is, and I'm talking about the commission, so yes. the focus is to promote wear, wear Ghana. Ghana. Yes. Okay, but people have been wearing African prints all year round. I mean, <laughs> remember every Friday, of course, we had to wear African prints. And eventually people started loving it. So they wear sure. it even more than more once than um, a week. So the sure. question is then, why do we really need to push this campaign? Because Ghanaians are already wearing it. Um, it's not every Ghanaian who is wearing it. Maybe you see yourself here, you wear it a lot. And the people that you come into contact with wear it a lot go to the street now of late of late people are wearing it yeah as you've seen but uh, previously it wasn't so what was the problem it wasn't so um people felt that maybe wearing this to work even is the, 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 the was it humiliating or something oh rather but if initially okay. because when you wear even a traditional thing to a wedding ceremony what happens people look at you with a different eye mm -hmm. yeah so we need to conscientize them to know that this is what we have and yeah. we should be proud of it. But there have been complaints about the cost. That is of true. Fabrics. That is true. You know, this is a production. Yeah. The producers of the fabrics, they know how much went into it. So automatically, if you want something that is quality, definitely it comes with a cost. Yeah. Now we've been seeing these cheap fabrics, unfortunately, mm -hmm. on the market, which are smuggled or imported there, which is having a toil on the economy of the country, mm. and especially on the producers of our textile industry, GTP, yeah. because their products, their, their designs are being stolen and being uh, replicated mm -hmm. at a very cheap price and sent into the country, what which I believe is not the best. What are we doing about it? If that you are it. focusing on promoting the textile industry, because sure. basically that's sure. what this is, sure. what are we doing to protect the industry and also enable people to be able to afford I think the, the fabrics? Uh, ministry responsible for that is doing all that it can to ensure that there is an end to this uh, menace. Okay. Because it's actually um, not helping the textile industry and, and the economy as well. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Okay. But um, talking about wearing these fabrics and all of that, the other complaint is it's hot. Some of these fabrics are not that comfortable. As for, the, for, the, for the temperature, that is the best. It's is cotton. It? Okay. You know, we are in the tropics. The weather is hot of late. You just wear this, what you're wearing today. Tomorrow wear nylon and synthetic fabric, and you see the difference. But they'll say because the patakari is heavy. No, patakari, no. The sleeveless, it's even uh, comfortable to wear during the hot season. Rather. Because you have a lot of air flowing around the body. You don't have the sleeves and what, what not. So the, the fabric itself is heavy. So that if you're wearing it and the weather is hot, you know what a type to wear. This one, for example, is also a type of the buttercream. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if the fabric, the, sorry, the weather is hot, 
You don't have to go in for the bigger ones with the sleeves, which is going to make you sweat. But okay. at least there are the sleeveless ones, which will allow a lot of air to flow around you. But wearing prints all the time, is it enough to conscientize people? to accept their culture and to promote it even more? Because then they'll say that there are other aspects as well that we can promote. Oh, that is true. As I said, we have all aspects of our culture that needs to be promoted. Mm -hmm. But what we are emphasizing here is, is the print. Where? Because we have an aspect in our policy which says the commission to help to develop and preserve the Ghanaian textiles. Okay. With our motifs, our idinkra symbols, and the kente fabrics and whatnot so that we chose this period to help to promote that. And as you say, not that alone. Uh, the Ghana Tourism Authority is pro helping to promote seeing Ghana and, all and the eating other Ghana aspects. as well. Okay. So it's not only the wearing aspect that are being uh, How are we roping in the primary students? Thank you very much. Students into um, this year, for example, when we started, there was a float last week. And it was involved. Uh, it involved the dressmakers, tailors, barbers, whatnot. We collaborated with the street fashion, and they brought all their people on board to do that. From next week, we are going to go into the second cycle schools. Okay. You know, if you're talking of wearing of our Ghanaian cloth, you see the boys how they wear it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you go to the secondary schools and they are, they just wrap it around the body yeah. as if. <laughs> so we want to teach them the better way to wear the cloth. Okay. And as you say, in the essence of wearing a traditional cloth. Okay, too. so that's so basically we, the focus in yes, the second cycle it. institutions. It, yeah. If we come to the primary and the The JHS. primary school, you know, initially there was this arts and crafts uh, call, as it, yeah. a classes that they used to have. Of late, I don't know whether it is there. And as you say, it's a, it's a minus on my part. But there too, they teach them, you know, they have uh, that those days, we have cultural studies where we teach them all aspects of the culture. But these days, I don't believe it is there. So mm -hmm. if that one was there, it would have started earlier from that level. Mm -hmm. So that the children will be taught our languages, our fabrics, our food and whatnot. So that they will grow with it. Yeah. If we're thinking of teaching them maybe some of these symbols and stuff, what do you think about having them wear uniforms? Maybe every Friday it has to be an African print. Have you thought of... Introducing yes, yes. something. Right now, some yeah, of them have, have it. Done the that. Friday wear. But I think the government schools too have some of them have it. Okay. They have their Friday wears being African prints. But, it's but as we say, widespread. as we say, if even those at that level, we can wear the traditional print throughout. Nothing stops us. Instead of going to buy those things from outside there to come in, okay. if we buy, use our own fabric. A school uniform, nothing, nothing stops us. Mm. And there's nothing wrong with that. What so do you I think, think about people that. saying that our culture, some parts of our culture is outdated? We're talking about modernity, Akitesia, cover yourself up. Mm -hmm. Yet we have some of these uh, rites of passage where you need to show some skin. And so if we're saying we're in the month where we're <laughs> celebrating Ghana and we want to at least promote the culture, <laughs> we can't have a girls may be exposed too much of themselves, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. even if they want to look as traditional as possible. What do you make of that? And how then do we try to modernize, if need be, our culture? Yeah, thank you very much. As a matter of fact, there are certain aspects of our cultures that we don't actually have to promote. There are negative ones yeah. that everybody is talking about. But the positive ones, we need to do it and do it well. For example, if you're talking of uh, indecent exposure, how does it become indecent? If you do it to the extremes, that is where it becomes indecent. If you have a slit on your skirt, it shouldn't be too long to expose your undies or whatever. You can have it there, but the length, as I'm saying, the, 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 the rate at which we do it, the, if we are not doing it to the extremes, it doesn't become in this, uh, indecent. Okay. Yeah, but at least we need to modernization. Fine. I was a fashion tutor, so oh, I, I knew what I'm talking about. If even you are cutting the 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 the, the cover, mm -hmm. the length from the neck to the bust. Yeah. Yeah. If you go as, to a certain length, it exposes the bust. Okay. So that if you consider all these things when you are sewing. It doesn't give the indecency that we're talking about. The, so, the reason why I'm asking this is because on Friday we're supposed to dress up 
traditionally. Mm -hmm. And I've decided to do the Poyo. But people are saying that, why do the Poyo if you're going to cover up? Because in the past, we would have the ladies <laughs> expose everything. And so how do we tell our story out there the we, most authentic way without necessarily covering up all the details because we can't expose ourselves no like that. we can't as, as you said mm -hmm. you did it but you didn't expose yourself. oh i'm yet to do it so You're i'm yet. asking for permission <laughs> what i'm doing is asking for permission to come and sit on tv without any <laughs> no for that that's <laughs> I, I i am also against that Ex okay. the exposure sometimes you see the breast exposed so what do you make of some of these we traditions? We, we can we can have a small something to cover Bruh. When I when I was teaching, as a matter of fact, we had a student to design a modern way of for the depot, something. You see, the student would design something. You wear some skirts, mm -hmm. you wear mm -hmm. some bra, very small one, yeah. to cover the breast and the aspect that needs to be exposed. Okay. So that at least you can put on the other bees and whatnot. So there are the modernity one, the modern ones, but at least we are doing it in, to conform with what we have, but not to give. That exposure. But we have other traditions around Africa mm -hmm. who even come here to perform. South Africans, the Zulu tribe. Mm -hmm. So they came here to perform. It was Umoja or so. And they went on stage bare chested. The women had their boobs showing. It's covered by different television stations across mm -hmm. the world. And they are proud to promote that aspect of their culture. If you go to naked, Swaziland. Naked. Yes. If you go to Swaziland, <laughs> it's something that still happens. You know, the, the, the women expose their breasts and all of that. So mm -hmm. why are we not showing that real aspect of our culture? Mm -hmm. Why are we not so proud about it? That is what I'm saying, that we're trying to promote the positive ones. If somebody comes here and he sees you, what would be the first? But we admire it when other cultures do No, I do don't it. believe every, uh, everybody admires that. You don't People think so? People talk about that. I believe so. Okay. That is indecent exposure. And so we yeah. should... We should try to modernize it. Find a way to cover it a little instead of exposing. If, if we used to do it and we believe it's not ripe for this period, why don't we try so to So if the push should still happen, would you advise that they cover the girls up? Yes. You'd rather they cover them up? Yes. Okay. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I will advise that. All right. <laughs> I see. Anyway, I guess, unfortunately, you will not see me on TV in my Umoja spirit, <laughs> showing you all the things that the depot would have given me permission to show. But we'll still try and do something, do something maybe. I've been speaking to Madame Janet Edna Nyame. She's the executive director of the National Commission on Culture under the uh, Tourism in the, uh, Ministry as well. And so thank you so much. And uh, we're looking forward to what more can be done to promote the Ghanaian culture as well. So all the best.